One, the clock is ticking, obviously, for James Stone. He's 36 years of age. 220 pounds. That's the weight of Booker. Three fights ago, he weighed 195, and people who were at that fight told me he looked soft. So let's see what he brings to this dance at 220 pounds. Let's meet him now. We go to the center of the ring. Jimmy Lennon. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you, and welcome to Pachanga Resort and Casino in Temecula, California, as it's time for the featured bout of the evening, brought to you by Goose and Tudor and Lights Out Promotion in association with the best dance sports show period and Pachanga Resort and Casino. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the WBC, President Jose Suleiman, Supervisor Rex Ross Walker, the IBA President, Cy Young Award winner Dean Jantz, Supervisor Bob Case, and the California State Athletic Commission. The chairman is Chris Mears. At this time, introducing to you are three judges scoring this bout from ringside. We have Hall of Fame official Marty Denkin, Barry Druxman, and Frank Garza, and the third man of the ring, the referee in charge of this bout, Raul Kais Sr. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Continental Americas and vacant IBA Heavyweight Championship. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from Pachanga Resort and Casino in Temecula, California, it's time for the main event of the evening. Introducing to you first on my left, he is fighting out of the red corner, wearing red trunks with white trim. Joining us from Detroit, Michigan, he weighed in at 220 pounds even. A highly accomplished amateur champion, he is undefeated in his campaign in the professional ranks with a record of 22 wins, no losses, 12 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the former WBC youth champion, currently ranked the number seven heavyweight contender by the WBC, introducing the undefeated Rydell Rock and Rye Booker. opponent across the ring on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing green trunks with gold trim, hailing from Ann Arbor, Michigan. He weighed in at 227 pounds. His record stands at 67 wins, four losses, two draws, with 43 big wins coming by way of knockout. He is ranked one of the top contending heavyweights by all major sanctioning organizations, including WBC and WBO number one. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the 2003 Fighter of the Year and the eight-time world champion, introducing James Lightout Tony. Once again, a referee in charge, Raul Kais Sr. Now to give instructions, 12 rounds of boxing scheduled. Hold on, sir. All right, let's go, guys. Come on. All right, James, I give you guys your instructions downstairs. Remember, protect yourselves at all times, obey your commands at all times. Now shake hands, and good luck to both of you. Let's take a look at the WBC championship rules, the rules that will govern this fight. The 10-point must system, of course. Three knockdown rule not in effect, nor will there be a standing gate count. Fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the final round. Either the referee or the doctor can stop the fight. The headbutt rule, we go to the cards after round number four. Now, sometimes it's halfway, sometimes it's five. In this case, round number four. With that, we are set to go. James Tony will wear the green trunks with the gold stripe, and Rydell Booker in the red trunks. Right out Booker comes in here very dry. Ready, ready. Excellent. How many times have you seen flash knockdowns when a fighter comes in like that? Yep. Booker's also soft in the middle. You can see it. And though James is 
at the heaviest weight of his career, it's solid. It looks solid. Booker says he wants to box him, stick and move. That's his plan in this fight. But James Tony is the guy who knows how to cut the ring. He's going to smother you. And I would take an educated guess that he's going to try to work that body. Of course, he's a great body puncher. Precise, hard body puncher with both hands. James is more comfortable when a fighter's coming at him so he can counter punch. But he is capable of cutting off the ring. Booker is a very good boxer, especially early in the fight. First four or five rounds, and then he tends to tire. So if James wants to put in that body work now, money in the bank for later rounds. Right hand by Booker did slip in here. He's Tony, a good boxer. He is a good boxer. Tony, a guy who will stalk it, as we said, very adept at cutting the ring off. He's, he's a very hard guy to stick and move on, and that's what Booker says he wants to do. Hopefully take him into deep water, take him into the later rounds. Well, except that that's where James Tony excels. He's so relaxed, he can fight a million rounds. It doesn't matter. Rydell Booker's been the one with problems in terms of stamina late in the fight. Another thing we want to point out is that we talked about the weight of Booker at 220. He's actually 10 pounds lighter than his last fight, but he's 25 pounds heavier than he was just three fights ago when he beat Arthur feet, Williams. But James Tony, just about a month ago, was 268. He came in at 227. Stop. He, well, he was coming Both off you guys, an injury when he was laid Both up with the Achilles down. problem. The tendon was torn, so yeah, there wasn't a lot of road work he could do. If you see the way James uses his left shoulder, his front shoulder, he rolls it. Very difficult to land a clean shot on his chin. Gives you a lot of angles. He's the consummate pro. There's no question about it. Double left hand misses by Booker. Nothing Booker just threw in. Tony just kind of biding his time, seeing what's in front of him. First round, pretty much as well. Oh, but that land, yeah, that left nice hand slipping hand, in. Quick. Tony, meantime, just stalking him, trying to stick that left hand downstairs. Good right hand of the body, and another by Tony. Hands are free, hands are free, gentlemen. Punch, hands are free. All right, stop, stop, break, let's go. Box. The accuracy of Tony's punches. He doesn't waste much. And a heavy-handed guy, too. Tony just smiled at that combination thrown by Booker. As if to say, is that the best you got? Well, it's also Tony loves to fight. He loves fighting. It shows you a pretty good jab, too. He throws it from his hip, but it gets there. And it gets there in a hurry. Good jab by Booker, and the right hand behind it just missed. Ten seconds, stop at the bell, Ten seconds, stop at the bell. Another good body shot. Stop you can tell the plan of Tony, and that is work the body, no question about it. End of one. Not a bad first round, really, for Booker, I thought. Although I thought he lost it. <laughs> I agree, and I thought he lost it. Rido Booker, you can see, the guy can move, he has good lateral movement, he has good skills, but yes, he's always lacked conditioning and stamina, and it's especially shown up when he's stepped up in his level of opposition, which has only been twice where you've really fought a name opponent. Both fights, he dominated early and faded late. James Tony, one of the most skillful fighters you will ever see, 2003 Fighter of the Year, last year, every unanimously Fighter of the Year. You know, his conditioning, it doesn't matter always what he looks like, and he looks t pretty tight this fight, because he's, his body does, because he's so relaxed in the ring. He can fight 100 rounds, and he's so accurate. Nothing's wasted, especially to the body. He turned that fight against Holyfield around in the third round in a close fight. One left hook, he snaked under Holyfield's right elbow. From then on, it was all Tony. And he says, and I think he's right, that he's a better fighter now than he was when he was a promising middleweight and a middleweight champion. Left hand slipped in by Booker, and there's a good chopping right by Tony. Might have been the best punch of the fight. Tony more in punching range here in the second round. Stop! Break! Let's go, let him go, Booker. Come on now. The thing about this fight, here's an undefeated kid from Tony's hometown with some hand speed and some real skills. This is not the easiest fight in the world after an 11-month layoff due to an injury. Moment, Tony has Booker backing up, and that's exactly oh, how he wants Break. it. Get out of it. Let's go. Box. Booker has been able to slip in a few sneaky left hooks that have landed cleanly. It's not so easy to do against James. Slip the right hand in there. Tony just kind of walks through it. Uppercut. Big shot. And that hurt Booker. Did you see the knees buckle? 
You saw Tony has mastery of every punch in the book. Hooks and uppercuts from both hands, whether his left foot or right foot is forward, to the head and the body, from long range or inside. It's a masterful boxer. That was an excellent combination. It was a body right, shot stop. and then Take the uppercut. Breath. Take a deep breath in. Let's go now. Tony working the body very effectively here. And another good short right hand. Tony good at, at avoiding Booker's right hand, but Booker is getting left hands in there. Hands free, hands free. All right, stop. I think Booker Break. has been nice stunned a couple go, times Booker. in this round by the right Let hand of James Tony. Let's go. Box. Sean O'Grady is with us uh, ringside, and Tony uh, started to do what he wants here. Uh oh, the plan has already been laid. Tony even smiling in there because he knows what he's going to do. He knows what he has to do. He's also allowing Rydell Booker to see that smile. Booker all of a sudden saying, uh-oh, what have I gotten myself into? But he's tough, undefeated. Now they're up a cut right on the nose of Rydell Booker. It causes blood to start flowing immediately. When Booker was making comments before this fight, even if I lose, I'm still only 23 and I'm, I'll get and gain experience. Free, Not the kind free, of talk you'd like to hear before a guy free, steps in with a guy like James Tony. Those body shots are really starting to have an effect and it's making everything else easier for James Tony. Stop! Break! Let's go, let's go. Come on, come on. Dominant round for James Tony. There's that left Take hook again, though, from Rydell. He is getting that in. Hands See Tony free, slipping the right hands, keeping that left shoulder just so beautiful to watch. Uppercut again, and then a chopping right hand. Both got there, and now Booker's in trouble. Ten seconds, stop! Holds on. Great, ten seconds, stop at the bell. Let him go. Let's go, box. Stop at the bell. Tony opening up, and a big round for him in round two. You know, Tony, the reason he's able to land an uppercut like that, he has a lot of confidence in his own ability to take a punch. I know Booker's not a big name guy, but he is a big guy, and Tony spent most of his career south of heavyweight. Yet his confidence in his own ability to absorb a shot lets him step in with hard shots like that of his own. Well, Tom Arnold, you predicted a second round knockout, and honestly, Tom, I think if that fight was a minute longer, if that round was a minute longer, you'd have been right. Yeah, and if I was scoring this like a real fan, it would be 10-2 Tony, that one, but I'm going to give it 10-8 because I know the damn rules. He almost had him. No, you're absolutely right. He did almost have him, and uh, that's a good score by Tom Arnold, 10-8. That's right. I wish there was more liberal system of scoring in boxing. Tony dominated the whole round, hurt him throughout the round. Why not give Tony that extra point? That's right. I, no, I absolutely agree. Well, they tried that in the state of New York for a while. Not successfully, I might have. <laughs> round number three. Tony how meets Booker with a sharp jab. Booker is continues to land the left, though. It's surprising to see Tony get hit even that much. He's so good defensively. But he's just kind of walking through that. He right. is. Right. And he's, nice and he's throwing his own jab with such conviction. It's rocking Booker back. Blood continuing from the nose of Rydell Booker. It was caused by one of those uppercuts in that right, second round. Notice Break. also Tony started the jab to the body, the soft midsection. Rydell's soft midsection. Now, then he started bringing it up to the head. Booker hits a roundhouse right that misses from Tony. And there's a good right to the body, right to the, right to the head, right to the body. And Tony senses that Booker's in trouble. And he may be. I'd like to amend my prediction of a seventh round knockout. I'd like to put that down about the fourth. Tom would like to extend his to the third. I have to say, going into the fight, I agreed with Tom. I thought this fight might go two rounds, but right now... No, it's he, not. He studies guys and breaks them down slowly. And, and the thing about James is he enjoys it. There's an uppercut again, and that is really becoming a weapon. And it starts with a shot to the body. All right, stop, 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 stop. Let's go. Booker, by the way, not just fighting to survive, not running away and holding on. He's fighting with a lot of heart. He's in trouble again. That was a right uppercut and then a left cross. And even the jab is knocking Booker backwards now. Booker also, when he moves to his right, his feet are crossing incorrectly. Tony lands a punch as Booker moves to his right, crosses his feet like that, he's going to knock him down. Those body shots are just hellacious from Tony. All right, stop. Take a deep breath. Let's go. Deep breath, both of you gentlemen. Deep, deep breath. And 
Booker's just allowing Tony just to walk to him now. I mean, look, James Tony, after an 11-month layoff after an injury, is taking on a young undefeated heavyweight, 23 years old, a pretty determined guy. I mean, not a guy who's just coming to lie down, and it's a mismatch. So far, the fight is a mismatch. That's uh, how nice good that. James Break. Tony is. Nice I think that's that. absolutely right. Well said. And this is a former middleweight, people. Middleweight. But let me ask you about Chris Bird's point that he made earlier on the Best Damn Sports Show, and that is talking about the fact that really the guy he's fighting is a blown-up cruiser. Well, I mean, James is a blown-up middleweight. Chris is a blown-up middleweight. There, a lot of the better heavyweights in the world right now are, are smaller guys, smaller, skillful guys from the younger, from the lighter weight division. I, I notice that you're saying that when you're sitting next to me, not when you're saying it when you're sitting next to Chris. Right, stop! Break! <laughs> I have to relax. Deep breath, folks. Deep breath. Booker trying to figure out the answer here, and I'm not sure he has one. All right, stop! Break! Ten seconds. Stop at the bottom. Let's go. Booker steps back, takes a deep breath. Good shot again by Tony. Stop Big round ball. once again. Foul! Well, right now, Tony putting a whooping on Rydell Booker. Let's listen in. Yeah, hold his nose for him. <laughs> Everything we worked on, man, you thrown out the window. Everything we worked so oh, no. hard on. What's going on? When he comes to you, step back. Keep the one, two down the middle. Listen, everything okay, baby? Yeah. Listen, when he comes to you, step back. Keep the one, two down the middle. Get in the angles, boxing. That's all you got to do. You sit right there in front of him. Everything That's like you right, need to sit up Spin him around off you. Joe. Finish the right hand. Oh, Somebody down. Let's go. Too many people up there. That's all you got to do. Joe. Yeah, yeah, the corner of James yeah. Tony. No, this gentleman. Get down, Joe. Let's get the three guys up. Put the hook right hand. Come on. I got him down right here, man. All right. got to stop boxing. Right here. The jab and the hooks are working up here. He's edge right up in the air. Jab, hook, and finish him with the right hand. Right. Freddie Roach was not the most skillful fighter of his era, Barry, to say the least, but the reason he's such a good trainer for James Tony, besides his credentials, he's an excellent trainer, is he is real. Tony is real. And when Freddie Roach some, says something as tough as he was, as honest a fighter as he was, James Tony's got to respect it. Absolutely. You said it. I mean, he, had, he wasn't the most stylish fighter, but he had one of the biggest tickers of anybody I've ever seen. All right, stop. Break. Nice and relaxed. Nice and relaxed. Sean, you were in uh, the corner of Rydell Booker. What, uh, what's the thought there? Well, Barry, I was talking to Henry Hill and watching him. Sense of urgency over here. They know that Tony is coming after him, so they're trying to get Rydell to turn, to take a half step back and throw uppercuts. They say he's coming. you got to fight him, Barry. Well, he's trying to fight him, but he's finishing second. That's not real good in this sport. A lot of fighters have tried to come in fight James Tony, right, including Break. belt Deeper. holders Deeper. like Prince Deeper. Charles Deeper. Williams, champions going, like man. Mike McCallum, pound-for-pound pound guys like Michael Nunn. Right Most there. of them have failed. Booker now just covering up. Right there. Come on, baby. It's all about the body shots, though. That's really what has done it so far for Tony. He tries another one with the left hand. Even Vasily right, Girov, who was an undefeated Deeper. gold medalist, nice the, voted box. the best boxer in the games that year. Sharp right hand all, by most Tony. Of his Fights by knockout, undefeated cruiserweight belt on, holder, and Tony beat him. James Tony is one of the most skillful fighters you'll ever see. He's also one of the toughest. Get that camera back. Little old pro technique right there. Tap him once, tap him twice. Get him used to that speed and that rhythm. And then he lands the hard shots while he lulls him to sleep. Come on, Rodale. Head to head. Tony just kind of walks out of it. He's giving him a false sense of security in here. That's why Tony is tapping. Didn't tap with that one. Tony laying in on him a little bit more in this round. Sometimes you'll see a guy take a round off. Well, he also threw a vicious flurry early. James Tony is 36 years old. Yeah. There's that uppercut again. Oh, Boy, that's right. a big punch. Now, if you're in Rydell Booker's corner, you have to ask yourself, why, you know, it may be time to go away from what you've practiced. It's obviously not working. I think either you stop the fight or you tell him, Rydell, load up with everything you have on home run shots this round. We're giving you one round to do it, and then we're stopping it. But this is clearly not working. You can't box with James. No, absolutely not. And I'm not sure he has enough pop. I, I think Tony might have already seen the best of Booker. A 220-pound man, though, if he puts everything he's got on it, anything can happen. Maybe give him one more round to try it, and then stop it. So even though Tony is not doing a lot in this round, he's still doing enough to win the round. Yeah, big. Booker. 
recovering up once again. Ten seconds. Stop at the bell, gentlemen. Ten seconds. Stop at the bell. Just kind of laying in. All right, stop. Break. Here we go. Let's go. Ten seconds. Stop at the bell. Four seconds left. And finishes it with a sharp right hand. Don't pull that shit, son. I told him not to do that, James. He won't do it again. Okay. See Tony with the right hook to the body, right uppercut to the head. Remind you of anyone, Barry? That was Mike Tyson's favorite combination. Daddy! Why are you so quick on the draw, Hunk? Tom Arnold, how'd you see that one? Well, first of all, the ring girl gets a 10. I'm going to go another 10-8. I know you guys don't like it, but he's the first one to Right now, he's holding. You know, he's winning. I know it wasn't Tony's best round, but I got to give him 10. Tom, I don't like it. I love it. That's exactly right. If more people in boxing used the scoring system right the way now. it was intended, that would have been a 10-8 round. You're right, my friend. <laughs> IMAX. <laughs> he's the Harold Letterman of, uh, the, of Fox But because, because Tom's coming to it from a fan's point of view, he's sitting there, I have 10 points. No, he's right. Why should the loser get automatically 9 when he just got beaten up all round? I agree. Tony just flashed a little smile at you and I. Right, I doesn't want to get off that stool. Every second on that stool felt good to him. Do you blame him? Stop, stop. Nice and relaxed. Let's go. This is round five. Tony kind of took round four off and still won the round. Booker comes out trying to jab Tony. Let his arm, let his arm go, Booker. Hands are free, gentlemen. Hands are free. Oh. And he is trying to load up. Hands are free, gentlemen. Oh. I mean, how much of this do you want your guy to take if you're in right L's corner? You, there's always a chance you can land a lucky shot, something free can happen, Tony can roll an ankle. But how much are you willing to risk? How much do you want to bank on that happening? That right hand was a wake-up call for Tony. Nice this is, you know, there's nice a certain react. kind of fight nice that can get a young fighter nice experience. Nice there's another kind of fight that can ruin him. And too many more rounds like this, you can ruin a young fighter. It's very well put. That was another good right hand of the body by Tony. He's just stalking Booker now. And that right hand just right through the glove of Booker. Now, having talked about the kind of uh, the obvious disparity in skills here, it is a joy to watch Tony fight. It is a joy to watch Tony fight for, a, for an average fan who just loves to see blood and guts and, and, and knockouts and also for the connoisseur who loves to see this kind of upper echelon all-time skill. It's a joy to watch the guy fight. All right, stop it. Break. Deep breath. Sean O'Grady right now is in the corner of James Tony, and I imagine, Sean, uh, everybody's... Uh, Pretty uh, relaxed right now. Yeah, a lot of silence over here in this corner. I think they're watching the beauty. Freddie Roach, a terrific Hall of Fame trainer. What do you see? Well, James is doing what he's supposed to be doing. We, you know, this we knew this guy's undefeated, but he never fought the class of James Tony. You know, he's 22 and 0, but he's never really faced anyone like James. And I just want James to go out there, get some rounds, break him down in the body, and take him out later on. Nice, nice work downstairs to the body. Do you think there'll be a point where James just gets tired of this and ends this fight? Definitely, you know, he's uh, he can pick it up if he wants to. Uh, he's just kind of playing with the guy right now. I noticed you guys over here rubbing his arm. Something wrong with his, with his biceps? Uh, you know, he went on a bit of a, a weightlifting program and got a little bit maybe too big, and he's a little bit tight. Yeah, a little tight, but he still has to, he has to feel good. Getting a little bit of Stop. work. Barry? Break. All right, thanks very much. And uh, it is exactly as Freddie Roach drew it up. And I'll tell you, those two guys are a pretty tough team to beat, Freddie Roach and James Tony. Freddie knows from whence he speaks. One of the all-time great hearts in boxing, one of the all-time great good guys. And right now, uh, one of the all-time great guys. And right now, one of the best trainers in the game, and he's got one of the best students. And, and truth be told, how much is James actually going to learn at this point in his career? It's Freddie's job to make sure that James stays focused, comes in in shape. But in, in the past, and I, I like you, I've done a ton of James Tony's fights going all the way back to when he was a middleweight. There were times he just wouldn't show up. And those days are gone. I mean, he maybe knows the clock is ticking There's for whatever reason. There's a sense of urgency now, He's Barry. a different guy. You're right. Let's go back, take a look uh, at how this fight has progressed. We'll take you back to round number three. First of all, the fight really has been all James Tony since the first round. Yeah, the hard jab, the precise body shots. He's still defensively responsible. See, see how he gets the right hand up to avoid the left hook, then throws a three-punch combination. You see the fourth round action. Right out missed all four of those punches. Couldn't land the jab. Tony works on the inside with a right uppercut. You talked about it earlier. You can see how he rolls, and he never really get hit, gets hit squarely, even though he is pretty much in front of his man. That's right, and even when he gets hit with one shot, he doesn't get hit with the combination. 
everyone can get hit with a shot every now and then. You never see a guy tag James with two or three shots in a row. Has lost, as you see, since 1997. I mean, here's the deal. There's no question about it. And there is kind of a vacuum right now in the heavyweight division. And I, I say that with all due respect to Chris Bird, who I think is a, not only a classy guy, but a classy champion, too. But Chris is more evidence. Chris is a naturally slighter guy who saw opportunity at heavyweight because he is so good. And because, uh, you know, he doesn't look at any of these guys like they're really that much of a threat. Tony comes out all business here in round number nice six. Up. Nice and relaxed. Let's go. Let him go right down. Let's go. Let his hand go right down. Let his hand go. Okay, stop. Break. Let's go. Tony has that look that he could probably take Booker anytime he wants. Last time I said that, the guy I said it about got knocked on his butt. Who was it? Sugar Ray Leonard. <laughs> it was against Howard Stop. in his comeback fight. Kevin the spoiler house. Yes. As soon as I said Leonard could take him out anytime he wants, Howard hit Leonard and went down. You know, the funny thing, though, is Leonard in that fight, you could see he was his heart wasn't in it. He didn't want to be fighting. James Tony loves to fight. He loves it. Again, a sharp right hand. And again, you see, what you see more than anything else is Tony watch not head, getting hit. Head, no. Right. You have this fight, uh, a five-point edge for Tony. Hard to see it really any other way. You know what? I think I, if I could, you can't go back and change rounds, but if I could, I'd change two or three to ten, eight rounds. I think Tom Arnold's right. The thing about Tony, too, is, you know, Lennox Lewis was the heavyweight champion of the world, but no one ever looked at him as the baddest man on the planet. He didn't have that aura. Mike Tyson was the last great heavyweight who was also the baddest man on the planet. And what James Tony brings to the division is not only supreme skill, but the, the, that sense of being the baddest guy out there. Difference between the best and the baddest, and James wants to prove he's both. The pity Pat jabs from Booker, who just really doesn't have much left in the tank. Never mind, of course, you're watching this fight on the best damn sports show, period. Commercial free. And that's something you don't see very much. At least not on commercial television. Booker did slip a shot in there. This is traditionally the, where Booker starts to slow down in the fight. He hasn't had a chance to speed up at any time, so we can't really tell if he's slowing down, but this is generally where he starts to fade. And, and you made this point earlier in the fight, but it's typical of Tony. He just kind of wears you down. He's kind of got one speed. He not really change gears too much, and he's Stop. fighting the Break. same in round 12 as he Don't is in round it. one. You saw Booker just take a big step back. And Booker's starting to think about if he wants to be fighting right now. That's right. That right hand to the body just started making him think about it. A deep breath through his mouth. When you see a fighter breathe Ten through seconds. his mouth, the you know he's tired. You know he doesn't have much left. Pop at the bell, gentlemen. Coming down to the end of round six, more of same. Don't hit him back here, man. Don't hit him back here. Well, Tom Arnold, uh, let me guess. 10-8 on that one, too. You got that right. I'll tell you, all Booker's doing is reacting at best. You know, he's holding on. Frankie, he's reacting Frankie, Frankie. a little bit. You know, James is bringing it. He's relentless, like you said. I think he's punishing him at this point. I hope he gets it over with quick for both their sakes. Tom, it's going to be a revolution in scoring. You're well, leading a revolution yes. in scoring. I love it. Plus, I got to go to the bathroom, so I'm hoping, you know, <laughs> something happens. <laughs> you got about three minutes. Go ahead, quick. All right. <laughs> it's a lot of fun to watch, guys. You know what? Tom Arnold's watching it through uh, expert eyes here. Knows what he's talking about. Well, it's hard to see this fight really anyway, but the way it is, I think. I gave Booker the first round, and I gave him the first round in the same way I gave De La Hoya the first round the other night. He exceeded expectations. Yeah, right? that's exactly right. Yeah, we got it. Again, this is a, he's starting to take, a, well, he's been taking a beating, and uh, I question the wisdom of Booker's corner. That needs to be a fighter's first line of defense, their own corner, not the referee, their own corner. And there are some fighters who've come back and landed lucky shots. Booker, if he were to do it, wouldn't be the first one. But is the price he's paying worth even that opportunity to try to do it? 
Sean O'Grady, uh, you have been in this situation. You've been on both sides of this situation, on the Tony side and uh, and on the Booker side. What What is it like for a guy like Booker right now, who really, for all intent, has no chance of winning this fight? Right. He's completely out of this fight. You know, I would kind of like to see the corner step in and say, you know what? It's not your night tonight. You're not You're not there yet. We kind of question the veracity of his abilities today when we were talking to him. He didn't quite see where he was going and what he was doing. He really wasn't focused on tonight's fight. But I like Tom Arnold's and I like uh, your Max idea about the 10-8 rounds. I think it's extremely important. Also, also, I like that Tom is saying this is fun to watch. And believe me, Tom, it's Break. more fun to watch than it is to get in there and fight. To be, especially, especially to be Rydell Booker, Booker or someone in his family watching this fight. It's not fun for them. It's brutal. When you're taking a beat, and it's brutal. It is relentless, too, from James Tony. He doesn't stop. That's the operable word, relentless. I mean, Tony is, like I said, he's not, he doesn't really ever floor it, but he's always on the gas about three quarters of the way, and he never gets off it. Yeah, Booker had an idea, throw a right to a butt to the body of his own. Unfortunately, it's the seventh round before he started decided to try it. John O'Grady, of course, the former lightweight champion of the world, so he's been there. Booker's actually having his, uh, his best round in a while. He's still losing it, obviously, but is at least seeming to come out of come out of his shell a little. Quick right hand slipped in by uh, Tony. Deep breath. Stop. Break. Nice and relaxed. Stop. Break. Let's go. Right down. Let's go. Box. Booker's doing what he can, Stop. but what he can is very little. Yeah, Sean's right. It's not his night. I don't think any night that Booker fights Tony will be Booker's night. You know, right, something stop, else stop. needs to be said here, Barry. Let's go, let's go. Come on, Danny, James Tony's looked incredibly oh, impressive all night long. He wants to end this fight in a knockout. He wants to create demand to see him. And the casual sports fan who maybe it hasn't caught the fight, oh, James Tony knocked the guy out. It has better, a nicer ring to it than he won on points. I think that's true. He wants to close the show. Stop at the bell, 10 seconds. He wanted rounds to begin with. It's getting toward that point now where I would have to think he would like to uh, just get it over with. The end of the seventh round. James Tony uh, getting back into the ring after an 11 month layoff. Remember October 2003, even though Evander Holyfield, in my opinion, has been shot for a long time, and he's still going to come back and fight. This was still an Dino, impressive win. It's not your opinion, it's a fact, Barry. Holyfield shot, but no one ever beat him like this. And Tony beat Holyfield no differently than he's beating Rydell Booker tonight. He turned Holyfield into a journeyman. Uh, it was sad to see, it was difficult to watch. A total domination. Uh, the only other time Holyfield was ever stopped in his career was against Riddick Bowe in their third fight. A titanic right hand by a 250-pound guy practically put him out. Not since then, and Holyfield fought Lennox Lewis twice and Mike Tyson twice. No one does that to Evander Holyfield. Even Chris Bird, who beat him decisively before Tony beat him, didn't beat him like that. I'm sure Chris will have something to say about that after the fight. And Holyfield's still not done. He's coming back yet another time. Box, let's go! Round number eight. Watch your heads, watch your heads, guys. Tony on his toes now. Uh, a, lot, a lot of Stop. people would say, Stop. wouldn't you want the young kid to get the experience of going the distance with a guy like get Tony? Wouldn't that boost there. his confidence? Get I went the distance. Cap. No. Right, it's the, the punishment he's accepting here is not worth the reward of later on saying, oh, I went the distance with James Tony. Tony, they, oh, oh, that's, that's, there's the, the right beginning of the end. Right there's there. the beginning of the end. Trying to get himself a little punching room. Booker in retreat. Tony's stalking him. Tony's a vicious finisher. He still takes his time, measures you, lands pinpoint shots. Good that right. right hand was the beginning of the end. And another right hand. That one misses. Left hook. Booker trying to tie him up. Chopping right hand right to the body in the uppercut. Okay. And he's in trouble again. If you're in Booker's corner, what are you waiting for? Tony right on him again. Left hand and a right behind it. Booker trying to hold Stop. on. Relax. Let's go, let's go. Got a long way to go here. Just under two minutes. This is a mismatch. The guy is now looks slightly concussed. He's looking towards his corner. But, you know. 
And he takes it. Right. Got to right. stop it. Got to stop right it. Up right here. Right. He's looking towards his corner. He wants help. And why Five, is his corner making six, him go down and hear seven, the boos from the crowd? Eight, it's not okay. that he doesn't have heart. It's Walk that he has the sense Walk to know there's no way to win. Box. The corner should take the onus off of Rydell by stopping this fight. Even, even Tony. Tony's giving him room here just to cash it in. And he, and he really should. He's just going to get more of a beating. And there's one thing about being game, and there's another thing about being stupid. And now the first line of defense is the corner. The second is the ref. How much more do you need to see? I know everyone would like Stop. a conclusive right. ending, right. but I think right this fight's been pretty Let conclusive Let since the beginning, Barry. It absolutely has been, and Booker's just taking more and more of a beating as the fight goes on. There's a right to the body and a right uppercut again. Hands are free, gentlemen. Hands are free. Stop! And Booker Break. is trying they to hold on. Down. Booker is in full survival oh, mode now. He keeps looking towards the corner. Help me, guys. Don't make me go out like this. Let me go out with a little dignity on my feet. Okay, my corner stopped, but he keeps looking over there. Backs himself into the ropes again. And nowadays, see, he does have heart. Booker does have heart. Nowadays, with the mics in the corner and everyone always listening, you can't even get in there and, and whisper, hey, stop the fight, I'm getting hurt out there. Stop, exactly, break, deep exactly breath, both right. folks. Let's go, guys, come on. Sometimes deep a breath. little too much bravado in this sport, and we've seen both of us, too many people get hurt by being too brave. And Booker, stop it Booker's the heart has been on gentlemen. display this entire fight. There's no questioning his heart. And, and Tony That's has fine. the look of a guy who really doesn't want to hurt his opponent here. Well, Booker got through the, the round, and he has to stop. Point. Hope that his corner stops the fight here. They show no indication that they will. They're asking him, do you want to continue? And if you ask a fighter... Knocked off, Frankie. If you ask a fighter like Rido Booker, there's that right hand. That but that was not the right hand that started him. That, no, that wasn't... Well, maybe it was. It may have, it may have been. I keep, yeah, that was the one. That's the right hand. You know, you okay? now you ask you a guy right like Rido Booker, do you want to continue? The answer is always going to be yes. He has heart. You have to make that decision for him. Frankie, I only had conditioning for two rounds. Very smart move. Runners. For a young kid, that's a veteran move to go down nice to a knee run. like that. Re try to regroup. Freddie Roach, I'm sure, is just minutes. telling him, go, go get him. Mouthpiece is in, seconds out. Five, Let's go, baby, you like it, baby, Five. you like it. Yeah, I'd really like to see him stop Let's this go, fight. Go, There's also the question, okay, look, there go. are various go. lines of defense for a fighter's own good, a fighter with a lot of heart and moxie, like Booker, who's in over his head. The first is the corner, the next is the ref, the next is the ringside physician. Someone needs to step up. Round nine, Tony leaps off the stool right, and right at Booker. Nice and relaxed, nice and relaxed. Let's go. But Booker is going to wake up in the middle of the night and see Tony on top of him tonight. Get your arm out, James. Get your arm out. Literally, I would presume. All right, stop, stop, stop. No, 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 no. Let's go. Nice and relaxed, guys. Sean O'Grady you know, from kept, the corner the far, of Rydell Booker. And what are they thinking, Sean? A very somber corner here, Rydell Booker. Henry Hill, even at one point, holding his hands, his face in his wrap. I'd sure like to see the towel come out, guys. There's that right to the body and right uppercut again. That's been what's brought Tony this entire fight. Right, stop. Tony right. has a bazooka nice at a range of 100 nice feet. This guy has a knife. You can right give now. him all the Let instruction him go, you want. You're making me rush Come on now. You know, it's, 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 it's nothing against Rydell Booker as a fighter. He's actually in the best shape I've seen him in in terms of his ability to continue fighting late in the fight at a pretty good pace. He's but he's in with an all-time great who's determined. Yeah, he's overmatched. We we'll see that happens in boxing. Tony just punishing Rydell Booker here. That's his job. It is. It, it, I, I do get the sense right, that you did, Barry, that Tony's Let's actually box. decelerated box. a little because he doesn't want to hurt the guy. You think, well, why not just knock him out? Well, Booker's a determined guy, and he has skills, and he can handle himself enough to keep him himself upright. But the first 10-8 round I, I, uh, of the fight that I, that I have scored, I just gave to James Tony. He's won every round. The last one, 10-8. Tom Arnold is probably right. He's probably won some other 10-8 right, rounds, stop. too. Nice and relaxed. Deep breath. Okay, let's go. That's Box. right, but you never see that, of course. Takes a knockdown like he had in the let's last go round. Right down. To make it a 10-8 fight. Usually, yes. Yeah. 
Sean O'Grady and I did a fight many years ago in Mexicali that uh, the last round was a 10-6 round and uh, it was Jorge Paez and he wound up winning the fight and needed the 10-6 right. to win the fight. Let's go, gentlemen. Let's go, gentlemen. Come on now. And it was legitimate. He knocked down Calvin Grove four times well, in the short, final round. Short of a knockout, there aren't enough points in the 10-point must system that Booker can win in a round to win this fight. No, no. It, he'd have to get Tony into minus numbers. Stop! Break! Watch your feet, watch, watch your feet. Ten seconds. ten seconds! Stop at the bell. Final ten seconds of round number nine. Do that right to the Stop body. at the bell, guys. Yeah. And a nine. Right it's okay to tie up, but you gotta let go when I say break, okay, son? Well, Rydell Booker has done okay in uh, fights that last 10 or more rounds, but uh, you have the idea that that perfect record may go away here. How could you say that, Barry? <laughs> a lucky guess. Tom Arnold, I know you're seeing this the same way we are. Yeah, I am seeing it the same way. And, you know, we're seeing a lot of cuts out there for Booker, but we're seeing something we don't usually see in a fight, which is a little compassion from James Toney. Uh, I think they got to keep fighting. I know you were saying call the fight, but this kid is 23 years old. This is big chance. It does make a difference if he goes the distance, but it also makes a difference if Tony knocks him out. You're right. But he is taking some punishment. That, you know, that's a, the, the, it's a good point that sometimes a fighter will decelerate because they think they're being compassionate. Actually, it's worse off for the fighter they're facing. But it'd be better if Tony were to accelerate and get this over with for Rydell Booker. So we come to round number 10. And to say that it's a long shot for Rydell Booker is to make an understatement. Yeah, he can probably find something. We've seen it before, but you know what? No, oh, there have been many fights where a guy's been at least this far back and has won the fight on a one-punch knockout. I can think of uh, even Marlon Starlin, Tomas Malinaris. I mean, Starlin was a great defensive fighter, winning the whole stop, fight. Stop, 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 Gets caught with a shot at the end of the round and knocked out. But in this kind of fight, when a young kid's taking this kind of beating, it's a real beating. It's not just the Tony's winning rounds. Tom scoring these rounds 10-8, and I agree with him a lot. He's right. No, that's right. Um, it's just this kind of fight where, you, you, where, where yes, it, it helps you gives you the chance to maybe land a lucky punch late to keep fighting. It helps your, your confidence that you went the distance to keep fighting, but it physically is not very good to keep fighting. See Booker just grimace from that body shot. There was also a clash of heads, but it was the body shot that made him just grimace in pain. There's that uppercut again. once more. And this time, Tony will try to get him out of there. Booker backing into the ropes. Right, Holds on. Break. Let go. Let's go. Box. Tony's such a sophisticated fighter. He faints and throws the punch where he expects you to be. He anticipates the move off the faint and then throws the punch to that spot, not even where the guy is right now. No, no, Booker no, trying to down. hold on. All right, up, up, up. Let's go. Box. Let go! Stop! Break! Let's go! Box! Booker just doesn't seem to have much in his legs. He was wobbly a little while ago. He's got his legs back under him, but they're heavy. Alright, stop! Break! Nice and easy, nice and easy. Deep breath, Deep breath, Come on. Good, sharp, straight right hand. There's that jab in the right hand behind it. The jab is stronger than the right hand. All right, stop. Break. Nice and easy. Let's go. Box. Booker does not lack courage, Barry. And he is loading up on some shots. He's trying to land a big shot. But, you know, it's like facing Randy Johnson. It ain't going to happen. <laughs> exactly. All right, stop. Let him go. Let's go. Let's go. Box. Right now, I'd say Booker has more chance of hitting a Randy Johnson fastball than he does seconds. James Tony. Stop. Break. Let's go. Stop at the bell. Coming to the end of round 10. I'm doing a hell of a job, sir. Well, it's been a repetitive act for James Tony and... Uh, Rydell Booker has been the recipient of most of the punishment, in fact, all of the punishment in this fight. To 
two good right hands guys, by right to Tony. Keep it, keep it clean, guys. Watch your head. You see Booker doing some actually nice, subtle defensive things there. But he's in, but he's in against a different class of fighter. He's tucking his chin. He's rolling with punches. He's doing... He's, he's, a, he's a nice young pro. He's not a bad fighter. This is not a case of, oh, Tony fought some bum. That's not the case at all. Tony fought a nice fighter, but he's great. Come back on top with it for me. That's all you gotta do. Come on, baby, work for me. That's six minutes. Still hoping against him. Let it go, man. Just let it go. Corner. Come on, come on, Let's go, baby. Round 11. Booker has knocked out Break. 12 come of his on. 22 opponents. He stepped up on a couple of occasions against Uriah Grant and against Arthur Williams, but it also should be said that Williams was 38 when he fought him and Grant was 41. And, and what happened in those fights? Former cruiserweight belt holders. He started very well, dominated the early rounds, Booker, and then faded late in his close fight. Both fights were close because he faded late. In this fight, Tony never got a, gave him a chance to start fast. No. That was the second round, last round, the tenth. And I gave 10 8 to Tony right, because Break. he it was staggered a it was a Booker, where Let's it looked box. like Booker might drop after another couple of shots. Lopsided fight. All right, stop. Back up a little bit. I'm going to fix your trunks. Come here, James. Booker has proven us all wrong, however. Uh, all right, box. Our predictions all uh, have gone away. Chopping right hand by Booker, but it landed on his shoulders. Now, if Booker was the kind of guy who pressured his opponent, this fight would have been over rounds ago. But Tony's being forced to follow him and chase him a little bit, and that's not Tony's natural style. All right, stop. Nice deep breath. Let's go. John O'Grady, uh, I'm assuming you agree with everybody in this building. Yeah, no doubt about it. It is Rydell Booker just showing his guts and determination hanging in there. But Rydell said coming into this fight, you know, I know I'm going to learn some things. I do want to win. I'm, I'm coming to win, but I know I'm in there with one of the all-time greats in James Tony. So he's happy just to be in there, and he looks like he's in a defensive mode at this point, too. He just wants to last to the, to the final Box. bell. He's got a chance to do that. This is round 11, coming down to a one minute left. So if he survives four more minutes, he's got a right hand in there. And a nice left off the right hand. Finish the combination with the left Easy. hand, which, Stop. Is, which is correct. Fox. Still a little life in Rydell Booker. There's that right to the body, right up and cut. That's Stop. just been Break. Tony has Go. brought Box. to this dance one time after another. Now that seemed to wake hands Tony up. The lack Booker. of competitiveness of the fight seemed to right, stop. cause some disinterest in Tony really hurting his guy. As soon as Booker got a little more competitive, it seemed to uh, awaken James. He's more willing to hurt him. Coming down toward 15 seconds, remaining in round 11. Counter right hand that time by Tony. Came right in Booker, the right hand of Booker. And Booker landed his right hand. 10 seconds, stop at the bell. End of round on, 11, now, on, he's now. still here. Well, Tom Arnold, I think it was your sparring with James Tony that uh, that's made the difference for him. I don't think there's any question about that. Well, I can't tell if James Tony is compassionate or sadistic. <laughs> you know, he, this thing, man, uh, it's going. And uh, I think this next round, we're going to see the lightning hit, and uh, we're going to see a knockout. I'm predicting that right now. Strong, strong finish. Kid, you know, you know one kid. thing. You know one thing that I saw James dropped his hands and mocked Rydell. Yeah. We had a fight here a couple months ago, Tom, on Sunday night fights. Nate Campbell, Robbie Peaton. Campbell had the fight won, dropped his hands. Peaton jumped in with a left hook and knocked him out. Don't play with a real pro. <laughs> well, I don't think that's going to happen in this case, but you never know. Let's see about heavyweights. You know, back to you, IMAX. <laughs> no, IMAX, Tom. IMAX, you, Tom. Him, him, Max. <laughs> You know that guy. They made a movie about him. Nothing he did outside of the game should prevent him from being in the Hall of Fame, Barry. 4,200 plus hits. Nothing can take that away. Last round. I'm not going to touch it. 12th and final round. 
Oh, good body shot again. Oh. Those hurt to watch. All right, stop. Break. Box. Well, you got to give Booker credit for being game, I suppose, but you can see a guy take a real beating, and this has he, been a real beating. But you know what? He was game in the right way in that he never just threw caution to the wind and tried to get it over with. He never, as I suggested he do early, he never just started tying Tony up and fought to survive. He's fighting as well as he can the entire time. And against a lot of other guys, it might be enough. Not enough against James, but he never went into a purely defensive posture. You see now, he's still throwing punches in the last round right now. No, I think that's right. And I think, you know, stepping up as he has done to fight James Tony, I mean, that is the difference from going from the minor leagues to the major leagues. Hands are free, hands are free. It's a whole Stop. different game. Let's go. Deep breath, both of you. Come on. But this was a lose, a win-win fight, I think, for uh, right. Rydell Booker. Stop. I mean, he's not going to really lose anything in terms of credibility for losing a fight to James Tony, who was arguably the, one of the top two or three heavyweights in the world. Oh, good right hand, hand. sharp right Stop. hand. Yeah. Break. Let's go. Nice to and James keeps Stop. keeps acting as though it's not hurting him, and I believe it's not. But when you drop your hands like that to show your opponent it's not hurting, that's when you get caught. All right, stop. Nice to meet you. Go way down. Come on, baby. Come on. I think a lot of people in his building are surprised that uh, this fight may be uh, in the hands of the judges after all is said and done. Right hand, and Tony has to oh, scramble out break. of the way of that. Nice Come on. Says, no, that didn't hurt. Tony wanted rounds, he got rounds. Rydell went the distance, made me alive. Stop, stop, break, let's go. Keep it clean, and keep it clean. Tony on, decelerated a little it when now, it became on, completely now. uncompetitive. Oh no. Uh, Rydell didn't take too, too much punishment off the, uh, over the second half of the fight. It could have been a lot worse. Yeah, he was staggered true. twice. He went down to one, stop, to a knee break. voluntarily. Stop. Never was knocked oh, off right his down. feet, really. And uh, didn't take too bad a beating in the last couple rounds. In fact, started to fight a little better in the 10th, 11th, 12th. All right, stop. Break. Nice too little and too on. late. Oh, now. But a learning, a learning session for yeah, you uh, learn. Booker. You learn. Don't get in the ring with James Tony is what you learn. That's what you learn. Stop at the bell. Chopping right now. Stop. Booker again. Break. Ten seconds. Let's go. Stop at the bell. Booker might even have won this round. Stop. It's over. That's it. But let's, let's not get hysterical, Barry. <laughs> I'm gonna give it to him just because it's bookends. Sure. I gave him the first one. Too. Sure, you might as well. <laughs> well, the fight's over. I don't think the decision is really very much in doubt. Tony got a lot of work in. I think he probably got more work than he really bargained for. Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, I I'll tell you what. He started faster and ended slower than I thought he would, James. But he won every round, I thought, and most of them big. And. Uh, would have been good for him to punctuate the night with a knockout. Didn't get it, and Rydell Booker deserves a lot of credit for uh, making sure Tony didn't get it. He was game the entire time. No, he absolutely was, and uh, he'll go to 22 and one. And uh, we will jump away for the first time in a long time. And when we come back, we'll have the official decision. We'll see how the judges saw this, if they saw it the same way as all of us, James Tony and Rydell Booker, in the books. The number one German beer in America is A, actually German, B, more popular than the other German beers, C, bags, D, all of the above. Life beckons, and you're holding the key. We have declared independence. That is what every man is fighting for. We will show the world what patriots are made of. Alamo. Own it on DVD Tuesday, September 28th. time. Get a $50 mail-in rebate when you buy four select Bridgestone Dueler tires. Rover.
explorer can get out of a ditch on the moon. If a tugboat can tow an enormous freighter. If an M1 tank can have a heavy-duty Allison transmission, then why can't your truck? At GMC, our engineers don't just ask questions, they have answers. The GMC Sierra line of pickups. Professional-grade engineering. It's not more than you need, just more than you're used to. Honey, there's someone I'd like you to meet. Just a sec. He's trying to decide what minivan to buy. The red yarn compares safety features, the blue yarn compares performance features, and the green yarn compares options. Right. Uh, excuse me, sir? Sir? Huh? I, uh, I can do all that for you. Really? That's great, because my neck's killing me. VHicks.com. Roadmap to the automotive world. Honey, online. Oh. Are you tired of making your landlord rich? Then you can't afford to miss the Home Buyer Conference. In this free one hour event, you can pre qualify for government loans, grants, or even charitable down payment assistance that you'll never have to pay back. There will be lenders, real estate agents, and charities to qualify you on the spot. Attend the Illinois Mortgage Corporation Home Buyers Conference and find out how to make your dream of owning a home a reality. Call 866-304-5678 and reserve your seats for the Home Buyers Conference, but hurry, spaces are limited. We welcome you back. This one is over. I don't think there's any doubt as to who won this fight. Tom Arnold, uh, I thought you were right on this thing all night. How'd you see it in the end? I'll tell you what, uh, James Tony was relentless the whole fight. I, I got, I'm proud of uh, Booker for hanging in there. I'll tell you, I don't know if he was, we were trying to decide whether he were being passionate or compassionate, or, but, it, but I think you might have hurt his left arm in the seventh round. We're going to hear about it. Back to you guys. All right. Thanks very much, Tom. Uh, why don't we go to the center of the ring? Jimmy Lennon, we'll make it official here. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Marty Denkin, scores about 117 to 110. Judge Barry Druxman sees it 118 to 108. And Frank Garza scores about 120 to 107. All three in favor of the winner and the new WBC Continental Americas and IBA heavyweight champion, James Lightsow Tony. If he did hurt his left, talk, left hand, that would explain all the right uppercuts throughout the fight late. Yeah, it would, and we talked about, uh, Sean O'Grady actually mentioned uh, the arm, so we'll find out if it was the hand or the arm. Uh, there was, this one really was never really in doubt. It was the left arm is left what, we, what we think. Yeah, we'll try to find out, though. I'm sure he'll tell us. This really started in round two, I thought, uh, where Tony really started to make a stand and, and just say, I'm going to dictate this fight. He was much more aggressive than he usually is early in the fight. Usually James likes guys to come to him, and he starts to break them down. Knowing he was in against a young guy who was going to try to stay away and box, Tony jumped on his man. He's also adept, obviously, at cutting off the ring and uh, and hurting guys if he has to chase them, and that's what he was doing. Every punch effortless until apparently he hurt his left hand. Something I probably should have caught at some point in the middle of the fight, Barry. We thought he was being compassionate. Silly us. It's James Lights Out Tony. You don't get that nickname by laying off. Who are we talking about? Well, we'll find out what the problem see that, was. You see later in the fight, he's measuring for his right hand. He's sticking his left hand out, then measuring for his right hand. He was more of a one-handed fighter. That's where Booker just took the knee, and then in round 10, and really 10 and 11, it was... Right hand, right hand again. You see later in the fight, he shoots out the jab, not too many hard left hands. Shoot right hand, right hand again. Very right hand heavy late in the fight. And round 12, really, uh, I gave the 12th round to Booker, but... This was a, a, a round that uh, really both guys were kind of saying, uh, let's get this over with. We'll put it in the hands of the judges. And the judges, of course, said, that's your winner right there. He's got the IBA belt, but he wants a lot more. We're coming back. What's great about this Passat? It has four motion, all-wheel drive. Right. Responds so fast, you won't even know it's working. Whoa. There, did you feel that? No. What? Exactly. I didn't feel anything. Right. What? There, did you feel that? I still didn't feel anything. There you go. No, did you feel that? No, what? <laughs> I'm just kidding that time. <laughs> well, I'm with you now. <laughs> Want to find out what makes a Volkswagen a Volkswagen? Come drive it. You'll get it. Here you go, boys. Here you go. Get the scent. Got the scent? Go find it, boys. 
Introducing the award-winning Outlander Max. It can handle extra tough conditions and one or two riders. Thanks to its exclusive convertible seat rack system. I guess someone's got a long walk back. Oh. Guess so. Don't get stuck with anything less. Bombardier ATV. Follow no one. Now with three years of free extended coverage. How did it come to this? All these different anti-freeze formulas, all these different colors. This stops now. Big Yellow's taking over. What are you talking about? Trust me, Sally. Trust Presto is go for all makes, all model cars. Big Yellow don't take over. I take over. New Formula Prestone. Good for all makes, all model cars. Mixes with any color antifreeze. Oh, Big Yellow could take over, you know, whichever. <laughs> Trust Presto for your own protection. I'd like to ask what it is you value so highly that you are willing to die for. We have declared independence. I'll defend it with my life, sir. We will show the world what patriots are made of. Here they come! Remember the Alamo! The Alamo. Own it on DVD Tuesday, September 28th. Hey, what you doing there? Text messaging? Yeah, I just got this Kia Sarah phone, so it's really easy. Text messaging is so dead. The new thing? Vacuum messaging. Check it. <laughs> Wireless phones by Kyocera. All the features, none of the hassles. Hey. Ew. With surround sound, this HD TV would be perfect for your party. Yeah. Hey, you should come. Fourth and 23. Williams rolls out, throws up a prayer. No! Touchdown! Oh! Yeah! Yeah! That guy's on my fantasy football team. You know, you should think about TiVo. You can record the game and celebrate later. Watch TV better at Best Buy with up to 10% off all home theater products, $2.99 and up. Thousands of possibilities. Get yours. We welcome you back. We take it now to the center of the ring. Try to find out what the problem was with the hand or the arm of James Tony. And there's a guy that's going to do it for you. First Tom Arnold. Arnold. Congratulations, Mr. James Tony, on another championship belt. Much deserved. You were relentless after the second round. Did you hurt your shoulder, your left shoulder? left arm the first round actually but you know like I said, I'm a soldier I'm a warrior I go do like I do yeah and you did but you did you look like you could go another 12 rounds right now I'm in tremendous shape I said whatever whatever we have was gonna be enough you know I'm, I'm disappointed I get my performance a C because I've been off for a year but you know hey we'll be back soon 